Good morning, students. Myself, Dr. Vijayendra Singh Tamar, Associate Professor in English. In the series of video lectures which are being prepared by me, this video lecture is meant for the students of BA Part 2nd, Subject English Literature, Paper 1st. And the topic of this video is the poem by Nisim Eskil Enterprise. It's critical appreciation. As you know, we will get one essay type question on one of the poem. And critical appreciation covers almost all kinds of aspects of the poem. So if a person or a student has understood critical appreciation of a poem, he can answer any essay type question on that poem. So, this is the object with which this question has been prepared. Now, first of all, as it is a tradition that when we do the critical appreciation of any poem, first of all, we try to know something about the poet. Now, our poet, the name of the poet is Nisim Eskin and he was born in 1924 and died in 2004. He was an Indian Jewish poet. You should keep in mind that the name though appears to be a very foreign name. It appears that he will be a foreign poet, but he was an Indian poet. He was born and brought up in Maharashtra, Bombay, along with other Hindu friends or his boy, in whose company he was brought up. So he was a Jewish poet. He was an actor also. He has written some plays also, editor and art critic. He was a versatile genius. He was one of the foundational figure in post-colonial India's literary history, specifically for Indian poetry in English. And he is regarded as one of the three poets, which we call in Hindi Trimurti of indo anglian poets. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1983 for his collection, Later Day Psalms. And he was also awarded Padam Sri for his contribution to literature. He joined as a lecturer in the Bombay University and he got retirement as a head of the department of Bombay University, English department. He was a prolific writer. He produced many poems. He happens to be one of the most productive talents and most distinctive poetic personalities of modern India. Having produced seven volumes of poetry to date, he is acknowledged by all and sundry. All. As an established Indian English poet of the post-independence area, age, you can say. Besides this, he has written a large number of poems published in literary journals, and magazines from time to time. He is a man of very taste and interest and preoccupations. Besides teaching poetry and prosody at the University of Mumbai, he also edited a number of literary journals, wrote reviews. In a word, he was a versatile genius. He was a visiting professor also. He visited Australia, USA, and many other countries and delivered his lecture there. So he was not an ordinary person during his lifetime. He was a well-known personality in the field of literature, particularly English literature. Now let us come to the poem. The poem, as we know, has been entitled Enterprise. Enterprise means some project which is very difficult one. This poem is one of the finest lyrics of Nisim Ezkil. It was written in 1959 and was first published in 1960. 
It forms one of the 10 brilliant poems published in The Unfinished Man, a collection of 10 poems in which the poet's art achieves near perfection. It is a short poem in six stanza of five lines each. It is an allegorical poem. As we know, allegory is a work of art in which there are two meanings. One is surface meaning, another is hidden meaning. Hidden meaning is always important. At the surface level, the poet tells the story of something, but it has a hidden meaning. For example, animal farm, thirsty crow, greedy dog, all these are allegorical work. Double meaning means. It is an allegory of the human condition on this sorry planet of ours, that is on the earth, and of the frequent efforts, failures, and frustration to which man is subject by the very nature of his earthly life. These human beings are, have, or are supposed to live on this earth, they make efforts they try to achieve their goal, but they do not get the desired success. This is the message of this poem also. The poem has many fold layers of on its actual meaning. Readers can interpret the poem in their own way. It being a well-written piece of art welcomes various critical appreciations. Apart from the meaning of the text, the essence of Indianness is there in the poem. These elements make it so dear to the Indian readers. The language used in the poem is a tough that one cannot understand the meaning after reading it for the first time. But I want to say that the language, the diction, which has been used by the poet is very simple. Even a layman after going through for the first time can understand at least the basic meaning of the poem. Now, let us come to the poem. What happened, as I told you, enterprise means a project, an enterprise or a venture, particularly difficult one. A target has been set and they have, the, or the setters of the target decide to achieve that. That is called enterprise. So a number of people, including the poet, set out on a pilgrimage. As I told you, pilgrimage it will be talked about as a journey to some holy place, but it has a hidden meaning also. That is why the poem is called Elgin. This a group of people, including the poet, they decided to go to a particular place. They start with hope, courage, and determination with their minds full of noble ideas and ideals. They are out to make some heroic efforts which would lead their hope to some noble achievements. They were so optimistic that they will achieve something great. Their minds are exalted and they are not afraid of any dangers and difficulties. They were so confident that they will would have to face any kind of danger or difficulty, they overcome them quite easily. With this attitude, they begin their journey. But very soon after having traveled some distance, they begin to find the journey to be somewhat unproductive and definitely laborious. This so after some time, their hope, their courage was not the same as it was in the beginning. The heat of the sun was intense. It means the problems created by the natural difficulties. And the travelers began to feel uneasy and uncomfortable because of it. it means a problem created by nature, uh, nature but they faced the difficulties of the journey bravely. But still, they did not dishearten themselves. They tried to face everything bravely. They continue their journey in hope. They take notes as they move along. They note down the goods being bought and sold by the pigeons. 
they also observe the ways of serpents and goats and note them down they pass through three cities where a sage had taught but don't care to find out what he had taught and what his message was the idea is that they were slowly and slowly getting diversion that is they were going away from the target they started concentrating on unimportant things about things sold and bought by farmers the behavior of serpents and goats etc etc they passed through three cities as in my matlab three cities means the heavenly city church church rome and jerusalem these three cities which are associated with jesus christ they passed but they did not try to know what was the message given by jesus christ the differences arise among the travelers how to cross a desert area this is a difficult problem some said they would so this way some said that way on account of these differences one of them who knows the art of writing stylish prose and is the best of the whole group of travelers forsake gave up the group and goes his own way while the others experience a sense of loss and feel depressed another stage of the journey is reached when the travelers were are attacked twice and lose their way you see from there was a problem from inside as well from outside double attack means in that way some of them decide to leave the group and go their own way the speaker in the poem tells us that on this occasion he tried to pray while the leader of the group feels that the, he smelt the sea that is he feels that they have reached a dead end and must go back their pilgrimage must end still they persist means there was no harmony no unity among the members of the group which started in the beginning a change has now come over these travelers they notice nothing as they go they ignore the meaning of thunder they find themselves without the common need such as so some of them feel entirely exhausted and are no longer able to stand the strain of the limit they are physically and mentally tired at last they reach their destination but now they don't even know the purpose which has then taken them there their journey has brought only dismay and disappointment to each one of them and their faces bear clear signs of their bewilderment means there were signs of frustration and disappointment on their faces they feel that their deeds were neither heroic nor unusual in any way then they realize that home is the only place where they could enjoy any grace here it means home means that we they should have listened to their inner soul then they would have been better position than this this is was the you can say idea which has been expressed in the poem now it's appreciation the poem is an allegory apart from the surface meaning it has a hidden meaning at surface level the poem describes a journey undertaken by a group of persons to reach a certain holy place the hidden meaning is that travelers went on gathering knowledge and information about various matters and about the people and other living creatures whom they met in the course of the journey even the word journey has its hidden meaning the journey here means once experiences in life and the group of the person here refers to people joining one another in cooperative efforts to add to their knowledge and learning the journey is there here spoken of as a journey of a to a sacred place holy place but the allegorical meaning of the word journey is the intellectual pursuits by a community or men who undertake the enterprise of collecting knowledge 
and information for their own good and for the good of the people at large. Means uh, they were trying to get that kind of information, knowledge, which will benefit the coming generation. Man looks forward to great results being achieved by his endeavors, but his hopes come to nothing. Even great intellectuals fail to achieve their goal. The mind of man conceives great projects, but the individual ego of the person who collectively embarks upon an enterprise, who starts a particular project, disrupts their efforts and thwarts their purpose. It is ego creates problem in achieving what is decided in the beginning. A feeling of frustration is the only reward that people reap if they fail to continue their endeavors in a spirit of cooperation and mutual accommodation. The idea is if, if people or the member of the group do not maintain unity, harmony, and target-oriented approach, they get only disappointment, frustration in the end. Eskil himself said that the lyric was written for personal therapeutic purpose, to analyze, examine, and explore his own feelings of loss and deprivation. He wanted to find relief from personal tensions and frustration, so he has expressed them in the lyric. He thus sought the psychological relief which results from pouring out our troubles and frustration to an intimate, sympathetic friend. But this analysis and exploration has been done in a generalized terms so that the lyric has also become a metaphor for a symbol or allegory of, of human conditions. Means that is not applicable only to the poet Nassim Azkil, but it is applicable to all. The personal frustration and tensions of the poets are thus be seen to be also those of humanity at large. Means this happens to every human being on this earth. The lyric also shows Azkil's mastery or poetic form Right words have been used at the right place. There is almost Shakespearean felicity of expression with hardly any false note or superfluity. Simplicity, economy, and precision characterize the poet's diction. The rhyme scheme is well suited to the subject matter and poetic form. The imagery or whatever of it there is in the poem is vivid, very clear, clarity is there. Here are some of the vivid pictures. Means, uh, full picture is given, even in few words. Or in other words, what the poet wanted to say, he has said in the fewest possible words and also giving a clear image. The sun beat down to match our range. Observed and put down copious notes of things the peasant sold and bought, the serpent and goats, a straggling crowd of little hope, deprived of common needs like so. Some were broken, some merely bent. These are lines chosen from various stanzas, different stanzas, but they give vivid image what the poet wants to convey and the reader is understood. The last line of the poem reads like an epigram. That is, it has become a program. Home is where we have to gather grace. In a nutshell, the poem is a great work of art from the pen of Nisim Ejkil, one of the greatest Indian poets writing in English. What the poet wants to say is that in this poem, a person who is on this earth should not try to achieve great. First of all, he should give importance to his inner soul's voice. If he will do that, he will be in a better position than setting targets and later on getting frustrated. Thank you very much.